I'd like to talk with you for a few minutes about a case called Wood against Moss, which is coming before the Supreme Court um, later on this month. Um, the basic question in the case is whether a group of um, political protesters can bring a lawsuit against Secret Service agents for an alleged violation of their First Amendment rights. This case uh, began almost 10 years ago during the presidential campaign of 2004. Uh, President George W. Bush was um, locked in a, in a tight race with his Democratic opponent, Senator John Kerry from Massachusetts. It was, uh, it was the middle of October, um, and the president was planning to uh, spend the evening in a town called Jacksonville, Oregon. Uh, his visit attracted the attention both of supporters and opponents of his. Um, and so as the presidential motorcade was uh, about to pull into Jacksonville, there were uh, two to three hundred um, anti-Bush protesters um, standing on um, one part of California Street. And there were about the same number of pro-Bush um, demonstrators who were standing on the other side. Um, what happened at that point, though, was that the president's plans changed. Um, and he uh, decided to make a sort of last minute unscheduled stop at a restaurant called the Jacksonville Inn where um, he was going to have dinner. Um, and it was a, a nice evening and so he and his party were seated on an outdoor patio um, section of the restaurant. At that point the Secret Service agents who were in charge of the president's security detail decided to clear the entire block of California Street that was directly, directly in front of the restaurant. Um, and it was actually the um, anti-Bush demonstrators who were located um, there on that block. Um, so the Secret Service agents asked the local police um, to move the protesters first one block and, and then actually two blocks um, from where it was that they were standing. Um, and uh, the result was that the um, anti-Bush uh, demonstrators ended up being about um, two blocks um, away from where the president was dining. Um, and they regarded that as, as uh, interfering with their ability to communicate their message to the president when all the dust settled. Um, afterwards, the protesters brought a um, lawsuit against the Secret Service agents and the local police, alleging that they had violated their First Amendment rights. I should make clear that um, this case has not yet gone to trial. Um, in, instead, the question in the case is actually whether the plaintiffs have a strong enough case that they should be allowed to get through the courthouse doors at all. Um, and in this um, case, the, the two lower courts um, said that the answer was yes. And the government has now appealed to the, the Supreme Court, and they're asking the court to dismiss the case before it even goes to trial. Um, now, to decide the case, the court has to consider two specific issues. Um, the first one is a First Amendment issue. Did the conduct of the Secret Service agents in this case um, violate the protesters' right to freedom of speech? Um, and to understand this issue, uh, we need to talk a little bit about the doctrine of viewpoint neutrality. Um, this is a very um, a long-standing doctrine of First Amendment law um, that says that the uh, government has to treat people on all sides of a particular issue in the same way. So in other words, the government is not allowed to treat one side to the debate worse or more restrictively than the other. Um, now that's exactly what the plaintiffs in Wood Against Moss um, say has happened in this case. They contend that the Secret Service agents um, forced the anti-Bush demonstrators um, to stand um, a, a one block further away from where the president was dining than the, um, the pro-Bush demonstrators. Um, and the plaintiffs say that things only got worse from there, <coughs> that after dinner was over uh, and the president's motorcade then left um, for the place where he was going to be spending the night, um, that the motorcade went directly past the um, pro-Bush demonstrators, um, while the, uh, the anti-Bush demonstrators were just left standing two blocks further away. Um, according to the plaintiffs, this was all part of a deliberate effort on the part of the Secret Service and the White House advance team to keep protesters away from the president. Um, on the other side, the, the government um, denies that. Um, they say that the Secret Service agents in this case were just doing their job. Uh, which was to set up an adequate security perimeter um, to protect the president's security. Um, and they further argue that um, the Secret Service um, shouldn't have to use a tape measure um, to ensure that um, people um, on both sides are um, precisely the same distance away in a situation like this. Um, so that's the first issue in the case. 
um, which is the, the First Amendment question of whether the Secret Service agents here violated the free speech rights of the protesters. Um, now there's also a second issue, which is a little more technical, um, and it's called the issue of qualified immunity. Um, to understand this issue, uh, we have to recognize that what the protesters are, are um, suing for here um, is money damages. Um, they are asking the court to order the Secret Service agents um, to pay money out of their own pocket um, to the protesters um, because um, the agents violated the protesters' constitutional rights. Um, and there's no doubt that there are cases where government officials can be forced to do this. Um, but the Supreme Court has long been concerned about the effect that suits for money damages um, can have on government officials. If officials are always worried um, that they're going to have to, to pay um, damages um, to citizens, um, then the court is, is worried that that is going to um, discourage uh, government officials from taking the kind of bold and decisive actions that are necessary to do their job and to promote the public good. Um, and as the government argues, that's especially a concern in this case, um, where Secret Service agents have a responsibility to protect the president against um, potential violence um, or even assassination. Uh, so that's what the doctrine of qualified immunity is all about. Uh, the plaintiffs argue that um, the rule against viewpoint discrimination is, is well established, um, that everybody knows that the government is not allowed to treat the people on one side of the debate worse than the people on the other side. Um, in response, the government argues that the courts have never um, actually confronted a case exactly like this before. Uh, they've never had to deal with a case where Secret Service agents uh, are being sued because they, they moved one group of um, demonstrators uh, a little bit further away than another group. Um, and so the government argues that in, in this case there really was no clearly established rule governing the conduct of um, Secret Service agents in this kind of a situation. And for that reason it would be unfair to hold the agents uh, liable for money damages in a case like this. Uh, so those are the, the main issues that are involved in Wood Against Moss. Um, the case is set for oral argument in the Supreme Court on Wednesday, March the 26th, um, and it'll be very interesting to see how the uh, court deals with the case.